incorporating some moves and combos that you couldn't fit into 40 cards. And you wouldn't want to fit into 40 cards because they have some requirements that you don't necessarily want to touch. Okay. So he's going first, though. He starts off with Wanted. That's a great start. I mean, one of the cards you want to see. We got ourselves the Black Witch. Would you like to cut or would you like me to not? Cool. And we are going for the cut right away. Sometimes players are like, oh, I'm going to go back into the deck anyway, so we're going to keep randomizing until it's necessary. We're going to randomize when it's necessary. Uh, Which now has been summoned onto the field by discarding the, or rather sending to the graveyard the for, uh, forbidden droplet. It gets hit by a ghost mortar. Remember, the ghost mortar does have an additional effect of if the monster leaves the field. You're going to take damage equal to the attack. We're going to normal summon out Jack Jaguar. Ooh, they, we're actually going into the different package now. Into Salamanger oh, Bailings. Bailings effect this is going to search for the field spell. I think we just saw the card. I think he just passed it. Only gets one thing. I think he passed it. It was at the very front. There, there it is. is. Got to catch. You know, got those uh, eagle eyes here. That's another one of those things. If you play 60 cards, right, you're not going to draw a sanctuary very often. Yeah, that's so true. So you'll be searching it more often than not. But when you play a 60 card deck and you still hit those unplayable hands and you get a really terrible mix up, it just feels all the more worse. Yeah, it's me and Cyframe Driver. <laughs> Always have it in hand. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so there's a Will of Salamander right here that's going to be able to special summon out back that Jack Jaguar or summon one from hand, but we're going to see the Jack Jaguar put back onto the field. Just such a good card. Jack Jaguar. Really stood the test of time here. We're going to take the two monsters. We're, I think they can only go into a Link monster here. Yep. Two fire monsters. Going to make the Ghost Rare Sunlight Wolf. Yes. Turning you, what's the Ghost Rare that goes in Salamad, right? It's Sunlight Wolf. Uh, are there multiple? Soul Burning Volcano. Is this the only Ghost Rare? Uh, I think there's a Link 4. Might have been a ghost rare. Wow. Actually, no, that was a that was a starlight. No, I think it might be the only one. Yeah, this is the only one. Well, at least we definitely know what that is, and we get to summon back our Jack Jaguar that is going to get hit by a Nibiru. Nibiru's token is going to be placed into the same in front column. of the extra monster zone. Yes, the same column as that Will of Salamangra. We're gonna pass turn here. Ooh, of course, that is one of the most devastating things that you can do to a salad player, and that is going to be Nibiru. But nowadays, they, are, they have ways to kind of get out of that by weaseling their way out. Literally and with Salamaker Weasel. You can see right there, we uh, remember the damage there. Yep. So 2,500 damage because yep. the uh, negated Diabell Star left the field. Wow, a one-for-one one yeah. start from Cam's side. Yep, that's going to go through. Let's go to a special summon of Snake Eye Ash. Snake Eye Ash effect. Is going to add to the hand a level one fire monster. Poplar. That's going to be Poplar. Poplar effect that's going to summon out. And Poplar effect is going to, on summon, add a snake eye spell or trap card into hand. That's going to be the field spell. That's going to be Divine Temple of the Snake Eyes. Yeah. It's been activated. And on activation, that's going to place one of those snake eye cards into the spell and trap zone as a continuous spell. We're going to be placing the new card, Ooh, Snake, Snake Eyes, Eyes Diabell Star. Carries the Diabell Star name and the Snake Eye name. I, I like this card a lot. I'm happy to see that it's being incorporated into these Snake Eye decks. Many of these players, they have also uh, decided to utilize the card because it is a level 8 monster. Pushed it into giving access to Hope Harbinger, Hope Harbinger as the most common rank 8 he played in there. Which allows you to go and go into Flambridge. We're going to summon into the Relinquish Anima with our level one. Disappears, I guess. And we're going to attach so it. So the token it, does okay. not disappear. It actually does get equipped. It does get equipped. Okay. Yeah. We're going to use the effect of a Snake Eyes Bell Star to summon itself onto the field by switching another fire yeah. monster into the graveyard and putting that into the spell and trap zone. That's okay. And that is more than enough. What a make quick it all the way here. You definitely want to make it past top 30. It just top 16 just sounds so much nicer. You know? 
Starting off once again with Wanted. All right. You know, one of the best cards, but Cam's deck is tailored with a lot of disruption for man. I mean, a lot of disruption for man. Let's see if this witch is going to make it through that, that early main phase. Yep, she did not last time. We'll see if it's a repeat. I mean, we've seen the repeats before. Yeah, we've had a, a few matches where the game's played out very similarly. And we see very similar cards in Max's hand. It was also a Ghost Mourner last time as well. Did you say Ghost Mourner has been one of the standouts of this tournament? Yeah, I think so. We've been I seeing it so. all over the place. I think it's just played the, really well. One of the key advantages of Ghost Mourner is that you can activate it outside of the main phase. Yes. Which is going through? Are we going to see the ghost? There it is again. Or? All right. So it's a, it's an exact repeat. Deja so vu. So far of the first game. Ooh, this is a different follow-up. We have a talents follow-up. We get to either draw cards. We're going to go for the draw card effect. You know, it, you know, it's scarier when your opponent chooses to look at your hand. That, mean, that means the rest of their hand is great if they don't need to draw more. Drawing telegraphs. Like, hey, maybe this is something that needs a little bit more execution. But unfortunately, it drew into a Snake Eyes Diabell star. And he does not have a Salamangre card to use that oh, little Salamangre. This is not a good position to be in. That's tough. Needed a little more juice there, but Talents is unable to Don't tell to me it's it. one for one. It is one for one again. Wait a minute. Is this, is this we're, game we're one? We're sure we're not in the time loop here. We're going to start with a normal summon of a Snake Eye Ash. It's going to hit by an Imperm. Infinite Impermanence has been activated in the middle column, but now we don't want to make any mistakes here. So let's all keep track of that at home. And here, it's in the middle column. Middle column. Yeah, it's going all the way to the right now. I'm going to avoid that column as much as possible. We're going to go for the Wanted. That's going to add uh, Diabelle Star, the Black Witch. Which has been added to hand. I mean, Cameron has a lot of follow-up at this particular point. But if he extends both of his cards and they both get hit by something, we might end the turn. But we're going to go with the activation of Divine Temple of the Snake Eye. That's going to put one of the Snake Eye cards into the Spell and Trap Zone. That monster is going to be Snake Eye's Diablo Star. I love this card. This card just gives you one additional summon now. Really powerful. And it gives Poplar something to put back that generates an additional monster. Why do these Snake Eye cards just keep on spawning? Yep. Well, that's kind of the story behind it, right? That all these vast roots and trees and these things just keep yep. growing out of it with some sort of forbidden power. Well, oh, that's true. I mean, all these cards are technically named after trees. Tree. But they're pyro, so they're burning trees. <laughs> Okay, we got to the Diabell Star being summoned onto the field, and there's a set on the field to Diabell Star effect. I'm gonna check the graveyard real fast. Just wanted Ash. Well, there is a fire monster, though that could come into play yes. later on. So he tossed the Ash for Diabell Star this time. And we're gonna see what's happening here. Looks like, like a Link Summon. It's a Link Summon. And he's got. Eat a front and center. Yeah, he, he saw it, and he's going to capitalize. That Ash going into the graveyard is now paying interest for this. Because yeah, if that face down card is nothing useful, it could just be over. We're quickly reaching the conclusion of this game. This is where interesting cards come into play i really wish there were more diversity in terms of like people's siding patterns like a torrential tribute would be really really cool to wipe the field maybe a daruma karma cannon would also be kind of cool too you know that's a really stunning stunning play if that was a possibility but right now we're just gonna be linking off the hita and the ash into what is the question now we can go into fire we can go into Promethean princess or we can go into sp a little bit to kind of draw out the game a little bit choose to banish away some of the resources but you do have a spell caster spell cards in grave is there enough spell cards in grave i believe there no. is so, yeah but there it is. counts the field as well it counts the graveyard too field and graveyard so there's exactly one two three yes three that's gonna summon back of course the yeah. a diabell star the black witch Are we closing out this game quickly with an Axis Code, or are we going to play it safe with an Apollos? Oh, we're yeah, going to attempt to close it out. Code. 
That's a nice access code, too. That's one of the new ones. That is the quarter century. Spirit. Yep, it's the QC. And we're going to banish a fire link monster to destroy the spell and trap. Oh, it was the Salamandrate uh, roar. Oh, I With feel no like... With no Salamandrates, that's tough. Uh, Max kind of bricked a little bit here. And now original Sinful Spoils sends the temple away. Going to get a level one fire monster from the graveyard. Not from the graveyard, from the, the deck. deck. But that's going to get Oak. Oak is going to be able to summon back the Ash. The graveyard. I think this has enough damage. Based off of what Oak can summon from the deck, this could quickly conclude yeah, the it's, game. It's 53. You could get Flamberge. 3,000? Yeah. Push the Abel Star. Yeah. I mean, no resources wasted. Really direct, clean cut. There is nothing there. And, and handshake right there.